Thank you so much. Uh, just a quick note, everyone, please make sure you are muted, uh, if not presently speaking. I think we just got some feedback uh, at the start of the meeting. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, the May 3rd, 2022 meeting of the Seattle City Council will come to order. It is 2.02 p.m. I am Andrew Lewis, President Pro Tem of the Council. Will the clerk please call the roll? Council Member Nelson. Present. Council Member Peterson. Present. Council Member Sawant. Present. Council Member Strauss. Present. Council Member Herbold. Here. Council Member Morales. Here. Council Member Mosqueda. Present. Council President Pro Tem Lewis. Present. Eight present. Thank you, uh, Madam Clerk. Uh, we will now move on to presentations. Uh, Council Member Sawant will present a proclamation honoring Scott Morrow. Uh, Council Member Sawant will first present the proclamation and I will then open the floor for comments from council members. After council member comments, we will suspend the rules to allow our guests to accept the proclamation and provide comments. Council member Sawant, you are recognized in order to present the proclamation. Good, good afternoon and thank you so much, uh, council president Pro Tem Lewis. Before I read the proclamation, I just wanted to <coughs> inform you and uh, uh, all the council members and members of the public that I am extremely unwell today, so I will need to leave after the proclamation is done with your leave. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Swan. Thank you. Uh, with sadness, I am presenting uh, this proclamation honoring the life and legacy of Scott Morrow, who tragically passed away on April 19th. And before I say any words about Scott himself, I wanted to convey the deepest condolences from myself, everyone in my office, and everyone in my organization, Socialist Alternative, to Peggy Hodes and everybody who is among their loved ones, and all the activists of Nicholsville and others in Seattle who worked with Scott. This is an, a tremendous loss. Scott dedicated most of his adult life to helping homeless people in Seattle organized to fight for shelter, housing, and their community. He was a courageous and tireless activist who never sold out his community or compromised his principle to curry, principles to curry favor with people in power or to make his own life easier. And I can just personally on that note, I can attest that it is such an unusual and extraordinary thing to have, find that kind of unshakably principled activist. Between 1980 and 1989, Scott organized with the Tenants Union of Washington, helping renters fight for building repairs, stop rent increases, preserve buildings, and replace demolished housing units. In 1988, he put himself on the line and was arrested while participating in nonviolent civil disobedience in the occupation of the Gatewood Hotel, which the property owner had left vacant in violation of city law. <clears throat> the resulting public pressure compelled the property owner to agree to give Plymouth Housing a 25-year lease to operate the building for low-income housing. At that time, he also, joined, <coughs> he also joined renters protesting the Washington State Convention Center's planned demolition of low-income housing at the McKay Building. Protests, a sit-in, and two brief occupations resulted in a settlement amounting to millions of dollars for affordable housing. Seeing the impact of rising rents on homelessness in 1989, Scott Morrow began handing out coffee to homeless neighbors in Seattle and discussed with them how to fight for shelter and housing. He continued doing so each morning until his diagnosis with cancer in 2021. In 1990, Seattle hosted the Goodwill Games and while handing out coffee, Scott started to hear more and more fear from homeless neighbors in Pioneer Square who were in danger of being swept as the city attempted to hide signs of poverty from tourists attending the games. Scott helped these people get organized. They uh, organized a goodwill gathering in Myrtle Edwards Park as a safe place for people afraid of sweeps. And this group of homeless neighbors saw the impact of organizing, impact that organizing could have and became the founding organizers of SHARE, the Seattle housing and resource effort. Scott and Cher set up a tent city outside the old kingdom 
until its residents were allowed to live in the vacant Aloha Inn. They also shared, started Cher's first indoor shelter at the Immaculate Conception Catholic Church. In 2000, Scott Morrow helped Cher's 10 City 3 win a 10-year agreement with the city of Seattle to operate one encampment at a time in the city. 10 City 3 is the oldest permitted homeless encampment in the United States. Cher now operates 11 indoor shelters, three work for housing locations, three storage lockers, and along with Wheel, two tent encampments. Eight years later, Scott helped to found Nicholsville in 2008, named in protest of the sweeps of homeless encampments ordered by former mayor or then mayor Greg Nichols. Nicholsville set up its first unsanctioned self-governed tent encampment on unused city-owned land on West Marginal Way on September 22, 2008. <coughs> Five days later, the city swept the Nicholsville encampment, arresting several dozen people. Nicholsville immediately established their encampment on nearby state-owned land, and Nicholsville has continued to operate tent encampments and tiny house villages ever since. It has been an honor to work with Scott Morrow and all the activists in Nicholsville and Cher Wheel, including Peggy herself, in basically every progressive struggle in Seattle since I first took office in the end of 2013. We worked together to win permitting procedures and the first ever city funding for tent cities and tiny house villages. And I should also mention thanks to the then council members, Nick Licata and Michael Bryan for helping us. He was, Scott was an integral part of the tax Amazon movement from the very beginning, from the time in 2017, when we, uh, during the people's budget movement, when we did the overnight uh, occupation, peaceful occupation of city hall, where activists of Nicholsville and Share Wheel were prominent among those who were uh, fighting for the Amazon tax at that time, alongside Socialist Alternative and many union members. He was there with us when the then majority council members sold us out shamefully and repealed the Amazon tax in 2018. And he was there throughout with us when we rebuilt the, the tax Amazon movement after my office was able to win re-election in 2019. And then we won the Amazon tax uh, in 2020 in the, uh, during the throes of the Black Lives Matter movement. So throughout the, throughout the time that I've been in City Hall, Scott Morrow has been uh, an um, indefatigable activist to win dollars for affordable housing and continuing to mobilize and organize ordinary people and recognize help, help them recognize their own strengths in coming together and fighting for something that they deeply believe in and fighting for an affordable city. Scott believed himself passionately in the rights of homeless neighbors to self-manage their own communities. He was dedicated to helping his fellow activists gain political confidence and, they, and he helped them, and he helped organize them to speak at public events and testify at council meetings. I, he also believed strongly in grassroots democracy. Nicholsville and Cher Wheel joined many progressive coalitions and endorsed progressive events, but only after a democratic discussion, debate, and vote of their members. This is very much a spirit that Socialist Alternative shares with all of those activists. Four days ago, the Seattle Times ran an article about his legacy including a quote from Operation Night Watch Executive Director Rick Reynolds, said he'll never forget the summer night he was handing out ice cream at a protest camp out at the King County Administration Building and found Morrow sleeping on the ground. I realized this guy is going to get up, go down, and serve coffee at 6 o'clock, Reynolds said. Why? He believed passionately that every human being is worth the sacrifice. It is not an exaggeration to say that Scott Morrow's self, selfless and courageous organizing has touched thousands of lives, perhaps more. His death is certainly a loss for his loved ones, but it is also a loss for all of us who are genuinely fighting for an affordable Seattle that allows for every human being's dignity. There will be a celebration of life for Scott Morrow on Saturday, May 14th at 3 p.m. in St. Mark's Episcopal Church in Seattle in uh, District 3, and um, I'm also, I'll end by saying I'm really grateful to Peggy and others being here on this Zoom call. I wish we were all in person at City Hall in chambers where we could bring hundreds of people who I know are mourning Scott's loss, but let's make the best of this Zoom meeting and let's make sure that we share the message 
not only of um, remembering Scott himself personally, but remembering the legacy that he left behind and not abandoning our fight for an affordable and just Seattle. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Sawant. Um, I will now uh, open it up for council members to make comments and we will then suspend the rules and present the proclamation. Council Member Mosqueda. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, I was not able to be in council chambers yesterday for morning briefing, so I'd like to add my name to the proclamation at this time in this public meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council Member Mosqueda. Uh, Madam Clerk, have we reflected Council Member Mosqueda's signature being added to the proclamation? Yes, we have. And do note, though, it has been distributed at this point, so we will touch base with the sponsor after this meeting. Very good. Thank you so much. Councilmember Herbold. Thank you so much. I um, just want to say a few words. I met Scott in 1994 when I was an organizer for the Seattle Tenants Union, and he at the time was a board member for the Tenants Union. I learned a whole lot about how to organize with heart and how to put the leadership of others first from Scott. He, Scott, was talking about the importance of listening to and centering the voices of those with lived experience long before it was fashionable to do so. And I just want to say I believe in my heart that our city is better for his work and even more importantly to the lives of individual people. Countless people have had lives that um, are less brutal and full of more community than they would have been, but for his organizing vision and his tenacious spirit. And thank you to Council Member Sawant for bringing forward this proclamation so that we can remember and honor that work. Thank you, Council Member Herbold. Council Member Morales. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, thank you, Council Member Sawant, for bringing this forward. Um, I do just want to send my condolences to Scott's family and friends. Um, I had the honor of meeting him several years ago, um, meeting in uh, the Othello Tiny House Village, as a matter of fact, um, and learned a lot from him about the value of self-governance for shelter residents, as Council Member Sawant mentioned. Um, and just want to remind folks that we can really honor Scott by ensuring that we provide the services that our homeless neighbors need um, and by building the housing that will provide the stability that our neighbors um, continue to need as well. Um, so thank you again, Council Member Sawan, for bringing this forward. Thank you, Council Member Morales. Uh, I don't see any um, additional comments from Council Members. Uh, I will just take a moment similarly to join um, in Scott's uh, recognition and praise as, as my colleagues have spoken to. Um, Jacob Thorpe on my staff uh, and I met with Scott um, as recently as I believe four months ago to talk strategy about expanding tiny house villages, expanding places for people experiencing homelessness to live and to be able to live in dignity in the city of Seattle. And I really appreciated Scott's advocacy, his partnership, uh, and his willingness to continue to work together in a collaborative way to get people more places to go and to stay focused on making sure we have a homelessness strategy centered on getting a roof over people's heads um, and letting people live in the safety and dignity that a lot of us take for granted. So uh, I really appreciated that partnership from Scott um, uh, in the last couple of years and his uh, uh, partnership is going to be sorely missed. Uh, with that, I will close comments from council members and I will move to suspend the rules and ask if there is any objection to suspending the council rules to present the proclamation. Seeing no objection, the rules are suspended uh, and I want to welcome our guests to the city council meeting. Do, do we have a, um, Madam Clerk, do we have a panel um, present um, here to accept the proclamation? I'm just looking at the um, boxes to see who we need to. Yes. Council President Pro Tem Lewis, we have Jarvis and we have Peggy um, who are present to accept this proclamation and to make comments. Um, Jarvis and Peggy, um, feel free to come off of mute and uh, engage in the meeting. Thank you so much for coming here today. Um, we are honored to have you join us. Um, uh, 
Jarvis, if you perhaps want to start uh, by making a few comments um, at this time, and then I can hand it over to Peggy. Um, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you so much, Council uh, Member uh, Peterson. Um, and uh, thank you, first off, to uh, Council Member Sawant for uh, introducing this proclamation and to uh, all Council Members. Um, you know, I've met Scott close to 15 years ago now when I first became homeless at, um, and I stayed at 1033. And at the time, that was the only option um, that I had. Uh, and uh, it was such an eye-opening um, event for me when I first became homeless and not knowing what to do and uh, no direction in my life at the time, but uh, because of the self-managed uh, nature of the tent city, I was able to uh, be empowered and, uh, and join the advocacy um, for others uh, as well as myself in having a say in how and uh, how I live in my life being unsheltered. Um, so with that, you know, thank you. Um, I'm forever grateful um, for Scott Moore for uh, empowering homeless people like myself and allowing us to speak for, speak for ourselves. And he will be uh, missed. Uh, his unwavering um, support for and empowering people that are uh, facing adversity and advocating for for them for ourselves it is really. Um, the main impact uh, that I can say that Scott Morrow has on me and and I'm pretty sure others um, that have experienced homelessness. And again, so I would like to thank uh, council members for this proclamation and then uh, that on, on behalf of Nicholsville, um, where I'm actually in now, uh, as you can see, I'm in a, I'm speaking to you inside my, my tiny house. Um, so um, thank you. Jarvis, thank you so much. And thank you for your service. Appreciate your presence here today. Um, Peggy, over to you. Yes, thank you. And thank you, Council Member Sawant for bringing this proclamation forward. Um, Scott believed that homelessness is caused primarily by a lack of affordable and social housing. He believed that homeless people are capable of not only operating their own shelters and encampments, he believed that they should be included in all discussions about what happens in the homeless community. He also believed that they're capable of uh, fighting to survive and to solve homelessness. I'm convinced that without Scott's dedication and his unparalleled organizing skills, there certainly would not be organized, self-managed encampments, tiny house villages and shelters, uh, and probably there would be fewer numbers of those things. And so I, I support this proclamation and um, I thank the council for doing so. Thank you very much. Peggy, thank you so much. And Madam Clerk, do we procedurally need to do anything else to deliver the proclamation? At this point, we do not. Okay, thank you. Um, Jarvis and Peggy, thank you so much for joining us. And of course, um, all of our gratitude to Councilmember Sawant for bringing forward this proclamation um, to recognize Scott. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, at, um, as was discussed at the beginning of the presentation, Councilmember Sawant would like to be excused from the rest of the meeting. Um, so I will make that motion, um, given that Councilmember Sawant uh, is not feeling well to be excused from the balance of this meeting today, May 3rd, 2022. Um, is there any objection to excusing Councilmember Sawant for the rest of the meeting? Uh, hearing none, um, Councilmember Sawant, you are excused. Thank you so much um, uh, for joining us. Thank you so much. We will now proceed to the approval of the introduction referral calendar. Um, at the at the front of this, I want to just make a couple of very brief comments under the President Pro Tem's prerogative. Uh, I know that there will probably be um, a contested motion 
uh, procedurally as, as part of this process. I would just ask colleagues, given that we did discuss this a fair amount in briefing yesterday, uh, to keep comments for or against the procedural motions brief um, so that we can move forward. Colleagues will be able to make their decision one way or the other. Uh, and and we, we did have a preview of potential arguments yesterday. And of course, it would be appropriate for those arguments to be re-raised. But I would just ask that the comments be brief uh, and that we then be able to move on and vote. Uh, I would also just ask that members make sure that uh, per our council rules, the motives of particular council members are not impugned as we debate this purely procedural motion. I know everyone will follow those rules and that people please direct their comments to the president pro tem rather than to other council colleagues. With that, I move to adopt the introduction referral calendar. Is there a second? Okay. Thank you. Uh, it's been moved and seconded to adopt the introduction referral calendar. Um, are there any motions to amend the introduction referral calendar? Councilmember Herbold. Thank you, uh, President Pro Tem Lewis. I move to amend the introduction and referral calendar to include a bill entitled An Ordinance Relating to Appropriations for the Seattle Police Department, amending a proviso imposed by Ordinance 126490, which adopted the 2022 budget, and ratifying and confirming certain prior acts and by referring it to the Public Safety and Human Services Committee. Thank you for that motion. Is there a second for Councilmember Herbold's amendment? Second. Thank you. Uh, are there any comments? I'll allow um, Councilmember Herbold for you to, to make comments first, and then I will um, accept comments from other council members on the amendment on the floor. Councilmember Herbold? Thank you so much. Um, as mentioned yesterday morning, um, or yesterday afternoon rather, the Public Safety and Human Services Committee faces an unusual mismatch between the timing of full council and the meeting of the committee itself. The introduction and referral calendar is voted on at the Tuesday afternoon full council meeting, and the committee meeting in the morning on, is, is in the mid morning on Tuesday, so there's in effect a one week delay between introduction and referral and committee consideration. Other committees that meet on, for example, a Wednesday or a Thursday can actually consider legislation referred on Tuesday's full council meeting. Um, I um, just as, as background, I want to just uh, state for the record, I supported when asked by Council President um, Juarez, I supported referring Council Member Nelson's resolution to my committee, and I supported a vote on it as scheduled for May 10th just as council member Nelson has requested. I would like to vote on both bills in the same committee meeting since they are related and uh, from some perspective, they're complimentary. Moving uh, full council meetings on Tuesdays has created a, a logistical disadvantage for timely consideration of legislation for committees that meet on Tuesday mornings. And walking on legislation is a very normal feature of council operations and has been done numerous times over the years. This is done by simply amending the IRC as permitted under our council rules and the rules themselves state um, under section 3A subsection 1E when adoption of the introduction referral calendar is being considered during each council meeting, it may be modified by a majority rule, uh, majority vote of council members present in voting. Um, and um, just wanna, wanna just underscore that um, I, I don't believe that applying our council rules as written is in any way um, a circumvention of those rules. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Herbold. Are there any additional comments on the amendment before the council? Councilmember Nelson. Thank you very much. I'm glad that my resolution has convinced Councilmember Herbold of the urgency of this issue, but rushing her proposal onto the introduction and referral calendar today is profoundly disrespectful, not only of our council president, but also the rules and priorities are agreed upon norms that govern our legislative process. You all know, but for the benefit of the public, our legislative intake and review calendar is three weeks long, from the time legislation gets on the pre-introduction calendar to formal introduction and committee referral, and that's what gets voted on today and every Tuesday. 
And this time frame allows the necessary time for the council president to review legislation, decide which committee to refer it to, and to try to broker compromise and collaboration, which I am totally open to. And that also provides the time for the public to see legislation on the adopted IRC before it's discussed in committee. These rules provide for thoughtful deliberation and transparency. And for some reason, Council Member Herbold asked Council President Juarez to expedite our introduction process, but, but, Council, but she refused, Council President um, Juarez refused, knowing that my resolution was up for a vote on the 10th and also knowing that I have a competing council bill that, um, that Council Member Herbold refused to let me address last committee meeting. Now we unanimously elected Council Member Juarez to be our president and Council Member Herbold is attempting an end run around her authority by trying to walk this on a week early, only so that we can vote it out of the Public Safety Committee on May 10th. And that agenda will already be packed with a vote on my resolution and pay up. And now Council Member Herbold wants to add yet another complex item to the agenda and vote it out on the same day, knowing full well that there will be rigorous debate. And I do have a solution. One solution could be that we discuss it on the 10th and then vote it out the following committee meeting once it's on the referral calendar. Now, I've allowed time um, on two committees uh, to committee agendas for discussion and vote on these surveillance impact reports, for example. And that's not even a new issue, but I did that because it's controversial. And two meetings allows for public engagement, debate, and amendments. We walk on legislation when it's really time sensitive, like when we're about to be sued or we stand to lose money if we don't take action. And walking on Councilmember Herbold's bill this time uh, does not meet that level of urgency in, in, my, um, in my opinion and uh, really doesn't make any sense to me because jamming legislation through our legislative process degrades our function as a, leg uh, as a deliberative body and creates bad policy. And one could argue that some of the things that we're seeing around our city now is the result of unintended consequences from rushing and not taking the time to be really careful. So Council Member Herbold spent months delaying action on this issue while waiting for the mayor's um, memo um, on citywide hiring incentives. And now that I've brought forward specifically Seattle Police Department staffing incentives, we need to take the time. We need to take the time to ensure that we allow for the development of the most effective incentive program we can get in order to address our public safety crisis. So colleagues, we have rules for a reason and let's follow them while maintaining our respect for Council President Juarez, who's not even here to defend her decision. So thank you. Thank you, Council Member Nelson. Um, are there comments from other council members? Seeing no comments, I, I will make some brief comments. Um, council Member, Peterson, and then I will ma make some remarks and give Councilmember Herbold the opportunity to close as it, as it is her motion. But go ahead, Councilmember Peterson. Thank you, uh, President Pro Tem Lewis. And I, I just want to say I appreciate that both Councilmembers Herbold and Nelson are wanting to address the issue of police staffing. Um, I'd really like to, for us to have more clarity from the executive on the full array of tools that they think they need to get our hiring plan back on track and to retain the dedicated officers and detectives that Seattle's trying to hang on to. I know in my district, there is a, a great concern from a, a many people about the reduction in police staffing that's occurred and, and want us to do everything we can. Uh, this may include moving expenses uh, as proposed by Councilor Herbold. I also very much appreciate the resolution from Councilmember Nelson, which provides maximum flexibility and presumably a larger dollar amount. And so I'm looking forward to voting for uh, Councilmember Nelson's resolution on May 12. And then whenever we do uh, take up the, uh, whether there's subsets of that, whether that's moving expenses and other things, uh, I'd really like to hear from the executive. I don't know if they need more time until May 24th public safety committee, but, but I would be interested in, in giving them that time executive so we can hear from them 
on exactly what they need. And um, so we're implementing the strategies the, in the right way the first time. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilmember Peterson. Um, just to make a couple of brief remarks, this is a procedural motion. Um, I do appreciate that that even if other elements of this broader discussion about Councilmember Nelson's resolution and the council bill presented by Councilmember Herbold have come into this discussion, um, the comments were germane to this procedural question in front of the council. Um, you know, I'll share a, a couple of my thoughts speaking as a fellow member of the council on, on how I'm voting and why I'm opting to vote that way. Uh, you know, I agree with a lot of the points Councilmember Nelson has made about the structure of our rules and why we do set up the introduction referral calendar to effectively queue up our legislative work and distribute legislation to the relevant committees and to allow sufficient notice for the public and council members of issues that are going to come before the council. Uh, that said, I think that there's some particular facts related to Council Bill 120320, which warrant uh, approving Council Member Herbold's request for this to be added to the IRC today. Um, one of those issues, as Council Member Herbold indicated, is the unique timing of when the Public Safety Committee meets, uh, which does tend, uh, and this was something that we discussed as we were reorganizing council rules last fall, that this would present a potential problem to moving full council to Tuesday um, afternoons. And, uh, you know, for many reasons, that has been a worthy trade. It is great to, to, to have uh, council briefing and full council on different days. But one of those consequences is the awkwardness of having a Tuesday morning committee that is going to be in the position of potentially needing to get legislation in the pipeline and face undue delay of an additional week for things to be fully considered. Uh, even with that caveat, rules and notice still are important, uh, which would be more germane if this council bill hadn't already been discussed in the previous meeting that Council Member Herbold held last week. Uh, this legislation was discussed with the chief of police and other people present. It was introduced uh, by Council Member Herbold, um, at least in, in concept, uh, and with text that we could all read. The bill has been repeated uh, or um, rather reported on extensively in the media, indicating that the public is certainly aware of this bill. Uh, finally, just as a matter of policy that, that influences putting this on now, given that we have a staffing crisis, given that this is legislation that the department has indicated uh, they want, um, a delay of another week is something that I personally, if it can be avoided, would not want a continence. Uh, by putting this bill on now, uh, it can be, action can be taken earlier, as Councilmember Herbold indicated. Uh, these resources can be uh, given to the department to effectuate uh, these changes on a faster timeline. Uh, so just from a practical standpoint, I think it makes sense, given that there has been significant notice, public discussion, public debate, uh, already on this bill, and given that in practical terms, we can get these resources to the department more quickly. Uh, for those purposes, I will personally be voting in favor of this uh, um, request from Councilmember Herbold. And Councilmember Herbold, if you, as it is your motion and, is our, and as is our custom, uh, you may make the final remarks on it if you wish, or we can call the question. Thank you. I'll just, make, yeah, thank you so much. I'll just make it really quick. Um, I just want to just underscore um, that uh, I, Council President Juarez is, is aware that I intended to walk this on today. Um, her um, process for when to expedite requests at this time is, is uh, for a very small subset of circumstances, and I'll be discussing that with her moving forward. But again, she was absolutely aware that my intention was to walk this on today. Um, and I just want to say again um, that to suggest that by following our own rules, we're somehow um, circumventing the president's role is a very unusual precedent to suggest and limits the ability of um, the council members to support a, what is a routine 
parliamentary procedure. And if um, council wants to um, tie our hands in this way to only walk things on when we have the council um, president's um, blessing, the, I think we also have council rules that are before us. I think they're gonna be coming to full council soon. And perhaps that would be a time to take up that matter. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Herbold. Uh, will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the amendment? Councilmember Nelson? Nay. Councilmember Peterson? No. Councilmember Strauss? Yes. Councilmember Herbold? Yes. Councilmember Morales? Yes. Councilmember Mosqueda? Aye. Council President Pro Tem Lewis? Yes. Five in favor, two opposed. Uh, the motion carries and Council Bill 120320 is added to the introduction referral calendar and referred to the Public Safety and Human Services Committee. Are there further comments on the amended introduction and referral calendar? Seeing no comments, uh, if there's no objection, the introduction referral calendar will be adopted. Hearing no objection, the introduction of parole calendar is adopted. Approval of the consent calendar. We will now consider the proposed consent calendar. Are there any items council members would like to remove from today's consent calendar? Hearing none, I move to adopt the consent calendar. Is there a second? Second. Second. Uh, it has been moved and seconded to adopt the consent calendar. Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the consent calendar? Councilmember Nelson? Aye. Councilmember Peterson? Aye. Councilmember Strauss? Yes. Councilmember Herbold? Yes. Councilmember Morales? Yes. Councilmember Mosqueda? Councilmember Mosqueda? I apologize. Aye. Council President Pro Tem Lewis. Yes. Seven in favor, none opposed. The consent calendar uh, is adopted. Will the clerk please affix my signature to the minutes and legislation on the consent calendar on my behalf? If there is no objection, the agenda will be adopted. Hearing no objection, the agenda is adopted. Public comment. Colleagues, at this time, we will open the remote public comment period for items on the City Council agenda, introduction and referral calendar and the Council's work program. It remains the strong intent of the City Council to have a remote public comment regularly included on meeting agendas. However, as a reminder, the City reserves the right to end or eliminate these public comment periods at any point if we deem that the system is being abused or is no longer suitable for allowing our meetings to be conducted efficiently and effectively. Our city clerk will moderate this general public comment period, and I will now hand it off to the clerk to read the instructions. The public comment period for this meeting is up to 20 minutes, and each speaker will be given two, minute, two minutes to speak. Speakers are called upon in the order in which they registered to provide public comment on the council's website. Each speaker must call in from the phone number provided when registered and use the ID and passcode that was emailed upon confirmation. Please note this is different from the general meeting listen line ID listed on the agenda. If you did not receive an email confirmation, please check your spam or junk mail folders. Once a speaker's name is called, staff will unmute the appropriate microphone and an automatic prompt of you have been unmuted will be the speaker's cue that it is their turn to speak. And then a speaker must press star six to begin speaking. Please begin speaking by stating your name and the item that you are addressing. Speakers will hear a chime when 10 seconds are left of the allotted time. If you hear the chime, please ask, we ask that you begin to wrap up your public comment. If speakers do not end their public comment at the end of the allotted time provided, the speaker's microphone will be muted at the end of, uh, at, will be muted to allow us to call the next speaker. Once you have completed your public comment, we ask that you please disconnect from the line. And if you plan to continue following this meeting, please do so via Seattle channel or the listening line options listed on the agenda. The public comment period is now open. We will begin with the first speakers on the list. Please remember to press star six after you hear the prompt of you have been unmuted. We have four speakers who have registered. Only two of the four are present. And our first speaker present is Harold Adom.
Thank you. And thank you, Sawat, uh, Council Member Sawat, for bringing up um, Scott Morrow. He was an icon in this city and still is. Uh, he's taught me so much in um, grassroots advocacy. And in my opinion, um, my organization, um, the Lived Experience Coalition, would not be where it is today from what his grassroots training and his grassroots movement in this city. I'm here to talk about the um, vehicle residency program throughout this city, where vehicle, people who live in their vehicle have now a target on their back and vigilantism going against them. We need a safe parking lot. I commend Mark and um, the King County Regional Homeless Authority for its effort in making sure that, that RFP is going forward. I say this because of those ecology blocks. Not only are they bad for us who live in Seattle, reducing parking, but they're illegal and we're allowing people just to put them out there. Police are not doing anything and why? I ask this question, I pose this question to council. The only people who make scheduling for the sweeps are the police and the people who put ecology blocks out there right after the sweeps know when they're happening. Not even activists, not even case managers, not even people getting out there to give some kind of relief to people know the scheduling of the sweeps. I, I put it to council. Let's find a safe parking lot in Seattle where people can move and be dignity, have their dignity restored and not on the street where they have no trash pickup. They have no bathrooms. And we know that is bad. These ecology blocks, they're going to stay in that place. We're going to have to force them to be moved. And who's going to pay for it? So I thank you for your time, and I thank you for your, hopefully, support on this. Our next speaker is David Haynes. Thank you, David Haynes, District 7. It doesn't matter how many cops you hire when they won't shut down misdemeanor drug pushers. We only legalize proper grown weed, not crack, meth, or heroin resulting in city council policies of exempting low-level misdemeanor drug pushers from jail is the root cause of society implosion and why so many people are being victimized by criminals committing crimes against humanity as junkie thieves are stealing everything in sight, ruining every block of every neighborhood. Yet the police chief misleads community taking credit for felony drug crimes, really the work of federal agencies, while Seattle city cops take credit as they prioritize overtime at events and blame the homeless for everything that's wrong. Yet police chief is undermining efforts because Seattle cops, the majority, are not trained nor willing or even bother to, sh to focus on low-level dollar drug crimes that are destroying lives daily, yet get listed nonviolent misdemeanor solely based on the dollar amount, thanks to city council and the prosecutor's office still helping Evil, stay out of jail. No need for bail. The city council should realize that where the, wherever the media takes a picture of a crime hotspot after the fact is the only place the chief dispatches a cop car to show force. Yet the cops never jail all those repeat offenders who simply move a block away or around the corner. Just look out city hall windows toward 3rd Avenue right now between James and Cherry. It's an evil open drug market right now, as I speak, where you cannot use the bus stop or go near it with kids because wicked predators have taken over. Yet Metro Transit bus drivers never help notify Metro Transit police who use technicality of law, claiming it's not their responsibility to clear the area because it's the Seattle police who claim that they aren't responsible for clearing the area because it's Metro's responsibility. This is a repeated dilemma that proves we have untrustworthy city leaders and retreaters of their... That is our last speaker present. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We will now close the public comment period and we will move on to our committee report. First, the Governance, Native Communities and Tribal Governments Committee. Will the clerk please read item one into the record? Agenda item one, appointment 2170, appointment of Gail D. Tarlington as Director of Office of Intergovernmental Relations. The committee recommends the appointment be confirmed. And Director Tarleton, are you presently with us? I see you on, there you are, great. Um, I, uh, I know that Council 
uh, President Juarez is not present, um, was someone designated to speak to the appointment or should I hand it over to Director Tarleton? Councilmember Peterson, you are recognized. Thank you, President Pro Tem Lewis. Uh, welcome, Director Tarleton. Um, yes, as Vice Chair of the Committee, Council President Juarez asked me to speak to this, although I know everybody's excited about this appointment, so there'll be others who will want to speak as well. So let me know if you want me to do the official introduction and then it, would I go first or Director Tarleton? Yes, uh, Councilmember Peterson, please, uh, as Vice Chair, um, speak to the agenda item. Great, thank you. Uh, colleagues, uh, Council President Juarez asked me to address this item as Vice Chair of the Governance Committee. Uh, we unanimously recommended Gail Tarleton to become the permanent director of our city's Office of Intergovernmental Relations, uh, known lovingly as OIR. <laughs> Rest assured that the mayor and council followed the nomination and confirmation process as outlined in our resolution 31868. Uh, some of you know Gail Tarleton very well and are likely to have comments in support of her confirmation today. Uh, briefly, I'll say that this nomination of a highly experienced regional and national leader firmly committed to Seattle is not only a positive reflection on the Herald administration, but also a blessing for our city as we compete for funding and policy improvements across all levels of government. Gail Tarleton has already served our city skillfully as interim director of OIR over the past few months and built a solid team to navigate us through a complicated state legislative session. As Mayor Harrell said in his letter transmitting her nomination to us, Gail Tarleton brings experience of both breadth and depth, including in elected public service on the Seattle Port Commission and eight years as a state representative of the 36th Legislative District. Gail brings a thoughtful ear, diplomatic mind, and a commitment to advocating for the best interests of the people of Seattle. The resounding conclusion from stakeholders was that Gail Tarleton has the resolve, temperament, and diplomatic skills needed to represent our city with distinction. And I'll add to these accolades that I don't think it would be possible to find a professional with as much skill and, and experience as Gail Tarleton to represent City Hall as our new and permanent director of intergovernmental relations. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Council Member Peterson. Uh, director Tarleton, uh, why don't you go ahead and give some remarks and then we'll open it up for general comments and questions. Thank you. Council President Pro Tem Lewis and all of the members of our city council to our great city, uh, Council Member Herbold, Council Member Nelson, Council Member Morales, and Council Member Mosqueda, Council Member Strauss. Uh, and I also wish to thank uh, Council President Juarez and Council Member Sawant. Uh, council Member Peterson, thank you very, very much for that introduction. I am so honored to be here before you all today, uh, an honor to serve. I am honored to serve the city council and the mayor and the people of Seattle in doing the work that we all know needs to be done to advance our amazing city. I want to thank you in particular for your support over these past four months as uh, we kicked off a transition in the administration and I was hiring for staff and promoting staff uh, to fill vacancies and to address crucial needs in the Office of Intergovernmental Relations as a short legislative session kicked off on January 10th. And as I said to the governance committee last week, I am thrilled that we have a fully staffed intergovernmental relations team who reflect and respect the rich diversity of this city. I am particularly grateful, uh, and all of you know, we can't get anything done without the people who work side by side with us. Your individual staff members and the central staff of the council, every city employee and all of the departments were on their A game throughout the legislative session responding last minute. You were on call 24 seven uh, to deal with late breaking 
testimony needs, uh, letters of support. Council member Herbold, you, you got on the horn with our, our team in Olympia, virtually of course, and uh, made sure that when critical gun violence legislation was being passed, uh, you were there speaking on behalf of not just your district and not just the people of Seattle, but our entire state. And that gun legislation all passed into law. Uh, Council member Mosqueda and Morales, you were there with Council member Sawant advocating for rental assistance and eviction protections. And at the last minute, your advocacy and support and data from your staff helped us get uh, Representative Macri the information she needed to tuck a very important budget proviso in at the last minute for 45 million in rental assistance. That's extraordinary. Councilmember Peterson testified on transportation and sound transit issues. Councilmember Strauss was there on behavioral health uh, commitments and budget provisos that have translated into historic levels of funding for behavioral health and uh, substance abuse treatment. And Councilmember uh, Lewis, uh, your team working with Office of Housing and Human Services have helped us so much on the housing front. And so many of you council members have done the same thing to put this city in a position to really transform access to housing for everyone who is unsheltered and for everyone who is at risk of losing housing. I, I think you all should really take a moment to acknowledge that the city worked as a team and we got a lot accomplished with uh, that team effort. Uh, Council Member Nelson paid attention to a very uh, interesting bill that navigated the session and, uh, and wound up passing without almost anyone knowing, except that she was there making phone calls, writing letters of support, supporting our King County Assessor. And, uh, and when it came to housing issues and dealing with ways in which we can avoid displacement, our King County Assessor was there for us and worked with us on budget proviso language. So that's where partnerships matter. And I just really wanna thank uh, also Mayor Harrell and Senior Deputy Mayor Harrell and the entire executive team, because not only did they work with OIR and work with the legislators, they worked with all of you to make sure that we were understanding where we had common positions, where we diverged, uh, where the executive and the legislative voices needed to express a different view in front of our legislative teams. And it's okay to have differences of view as long as we are conveying the information to our legislators that is accurate and that is appropriate and able to influence their thinking on how to resolve the differences of view in policy as well as in budget debates. I, I enjoy that part of this job. I believe that good policy comes from really healthy deliberation and debate. And as I told the governance committee last week, um, my husband and I love this city. Uh, we adopted Seattle as our forever home uh, nearly 30 years ago. And I am so thrilled and honored to work with you and the mayor and the city employees and my OIR team at such a pivotal time in our history. I am very grateful for your entrusting me to do this job and I look forward to getting the work done. Thanks so much. Uh, Director Tarleton, thank you so much. Councilmember Strauss, did you have a comment or question? Uh, thank you, Councilman. President Pro Tem, uh, Director Charlton, it has been an immense pleasure to work with you over the last decade. You are the definition of public servant. It's been an, op an honest honor to, be, to have been represented by you and to get this opportunity today to represent you. You bring an, such an incredible wealth of experience, expertise, and relationships at the local, state, federal, and international level. You demonstrated your strength this last and most recent short legislative session. And frankly, we need you more now than ever before. Uh, in light of the devastating news from the Supreme Court, I'm looking forward to working with you to do all we can at the federal level and at 
understand what additional protections or resources are needed at the city or state level to safeguard abortion access. You have a track record of being collaborative, of creating collaborative solutions by working cross jurisdictionally. I'm going to raise a couple examples right here and now that you helped us start the Ballard Inner Bay Regional Transportation Corridor. You got us our first seed funding from the state, and that uh, translated into $25 million from the state budget this year. And that's because of your work. So I want to thank you there. And I hope not to embarrass you, but you, uh, Smith Cove Park is another great example of bringing the port, the county, and the city together. I keep this picture with me uh, in my office to ensure that we get that fun, to get that park finished since we still haven't broken ground. I just have to thank you for accepting this role. I'm incredibly grateful for your continued service to our nation and the residents of Seattle, and it's an honor to work with you. Thank you, Councilmember, and that was one for the archives, that photo. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you so much, Councilmember Strauss. Uh, Councilmember Nelson. Well, I'm groping for superlatives here, uh, but I just want to note that um, you are a, a fierce, fierce, fierce advocate for um, for your district in the past, I remember meeting you, and you and you uh, you advocated for the burgeoning um, you know, uh, craft beer industry in Seattle. And but but not only are you an advocate, you are also you bring to the city um, the gravity and the uh, of of your relationships that you've built all you know throughout the course of your career. And so I just want to say that I am um, you know your relationships uh, already in Olympia um, and uh, and your and, and and what you displayed right now, thanking each council member and recognizing what everybody has done as a team. That is, that's testament to why you are the right person for this job. And I'm just really glad you have Seattle's back. So thank you and congratulations. Uh, Council member Herbold. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of words. I just wanna say publicly how, I, how much I feel lucky that the city of Seattle is going to have your real world legislative experience to help us be more successful in advancing Seattle's state legislative agenda. Um, you um, not only are um, a passionate and effective advocate, you're also a great leader and the support I've received from, from your office um, derives from, from that leadership. I do wanna highlight um, the answer to one of the questions that I submitted, because I think um, it really, for me, um, cinches the, the idea that you're the right person for this job. Um, I asked how you would resolve a situation when there was a disagreement between the executive and council, because as we all know, our legislative agenda is um, a consensus uh, document um, from, from the city. Um, and you really uh, embraced the uh, a recognition that there are differences of opinion and that that's not a bad thing. That's not a thing to run away from. You, you write, there's nothing like a legislative session to reveal differences of perspective. And I just, as I've made sure council members and the executive were aware of differences of you emerging with pieces of legislation introduced this recent session, I also work with my OIR team to help them characterize the specific nature of the policy differences. The legislative process is designed to understand where there's alignment and when there are differences of a view. We have a responsibility to help legislators know when city policymakers are on the same page and where positions may diverge. Um, and again, I, I just want to say that to me, um, um, working to make sure everybody under, uh, understands those differences is um, really important to the legislative process. And I'm really pleased that, um, that you embrace that. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Herbold. Are there any other comments uh, or questions from council members for Director Herbold or, or for Director Tarleton or regarding um, Director Tarleton's appointment? Seeing none, I'll just close out uh, 
to indicate how thrilled I am that we will get to work with Director Tarleton on an ongoing permanent basis as a permanent cabinet officer of the city to be our voice in a region, a state, and a country where Seattle has a lot that, that we want to, to give and, and a lot that we want to work with all those authorities on to improve the quality of life for all of our people and residents here in the city of Seattle. Um, you know, uh, Director Tarleton, I think it's uh, amazing that we met 15 years ago at a Young Democrats meeting at the Northgate Library, a city facility, I might add, uh, appropriate here. Um, and if you had told me 15 years ago that I was gonna be presiding over a council meeting as the council president pro tem, appointing you to be the director of intergovernmental relations for the city, uh, I would have said you, you didn't know what you were talking about. Uh, so I, I couldn't be more thrilled to be able to be here, given our years of, of friendship, your mentorship, and just your stellar record as an outstanding public servant at every level of government you've served in, for us to be able to be here and continue to work together as we have for the past 15 years. Um, I am absolutely thrilled to vote in favor of this nomination today. Uh, so with that, um, I will call the question and ask that the clerk please call the roll on confirmation of the appointment. Councilmember Nelson? Aye. Councilmember Peterson? Aye. Councilmember Strauss? Yes. Councilmember Herbold? Yes. Councilmember Morales? Yes. Councilmember Mosqueda? Yes. Council President Pro Tem Lewis? Yes. Seven in favor, none opposed. Uh, congratulations, Director Tarleton. Looking forward to much more uh, work together. And I will turn it back over to you for some last remarks before we move on to the next agenda item. Uh, thank you, Council President Pro Tem Lewis and all of you for your vote of confidence and your really kind words. Uh, you probably noticed that half the time I'm laughing here, uh, <laughs> re reflecting on the situations where we have all experienced uh, that we start work and we don't know where it's going to go. But what I do know is that if we don't start, we will never get to where we need to go. Uh, one brief memory that I have always had is... Um, when I first became a member of the Port of Seattle Commission, and in my very first few months, of course, the economy collapsed and markets uh, froze on municipal bonds, and we were trying to deal with port security issues um, in 2008, as well as try to deal with uh, lots of problems at uh, in our city, in our county governments, and at our port. And I had to go to a port security conference where everyone around the world was complaining about the new law that Senator Murray um, and then Governor Gregoire had put into effect that uh, all ports had to be able to monitor the security of containers coming into every port in the country. And at that point um, in 2008, nationwide, only 4% of the containers that came into the country from other countries were actually scanned. And so I was at this security conference and one of the port directors in, I think in Amsterdam, one of the biggest ports in the world said, there is no way we're gonna be able to examine a hundred percent of the containers by 2012. That was the goal, four years later, 2012. And I remember saying to that port director, well, if we don't start doing it right now, you're absolutely right. We will never have the ability to scan 100% of the containers. And we'll also never know if we were able to get there. So let's just start doing it and see where we land. And by 2012, we were scanning close to 100% of the containers coming into the country. So it's amazing what you can do when you can look at it through a different lens and say, 
what would happen if we actually achieved it? And how do we get there? And working with all of you and with the mayor and with the people in this city and with the people in all of our neighboring communities and our partners at every level, we can get there wherever we want to take this great city. So thank you so, so much. I am looking forward to working with you. Thank you so much, Director Tarleton, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, moving on to item two, Neighborhoods, Education, Civil Rights, and Culture Committee. Uh, will the clerk please read the short title of item two into the record? Agenda item two, Council Bill 120310, relating to historic preservation and posing controls upon the Center for Wooden Boats, a landmark designated by the Landmarks Preservation Board. The committee recommends that the bill pass. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilmember Morales, as chair of the committee, you are recognized in order to provide the committee report. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Um, so as the clerk mentioned, uh, this uh, legislation acknowledges the designation of the Center for Wooden Boats as a historic landmark uh, by the Landmarks Preservation Board. Uh, I'm sure we've all been down there. I was down there uh, just several weeks ago um, enjoying the Center for Wooden Boats. Um, this legislation imposes controls and grants incentives to the center, um, which began in the early 80s. Um, the property is located in the South Lake Union neighborhood, um, and an agreement has been signed by the owner and approved by the Landmarks Preservation Board, um, indicating the controls and incentives. So uh, the committee recommends approval of this legislation. Thank you so much, Councilmember Morales. Are there any comments on the legislation? Hearing no comments, will the clerk please call the roll on the passage of the bill? Councilmember Nelson? Aye. Councilmember Peterson? Aye. Councilmember Strauss? Yes. Councilmember Herbold? Yes. Councilmember Morales? Yes. Councilmember Mosqueda? Aye. Council President Pro Tem Lewis? Yes. Seven in favor, none opposed. Uh, thank you, Madam Clerk. The bill passes and the chair will sign it. Will the clerk please affix my signature to the legislation on my behalf? Item three uh, from the same committee. Will the clerk please read the short title of item three into the record? Agenda item three, Council Bill 120311, relating to historic preservations, imposing controls upon the Wagner Floating Home, a landmark designated by the Landmarks Preservation Board. The committee recommends the bill pass. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilman Morales, as chair of the committee, you are recognized. Thank you very much. Uh, the Wagner Floating Home was built in around 1910. Uh, it was originally located in Lake Washington near Madison Park, but was moved to Lake Union around 1938 uh, and presently sits around the East Queen Anne neighborhood. Um, the controls and incentives agreement for this property um, uh, applies to the exterior of the floating home and the floating foundation and platform, but not to uh, in-kind maintenance or repairs of the designated features. Um, we did want to make sure that the owner who actually lives in the home is able to make any repairs that are necessary. Um, but the idea here is to preserve the foundation because it is historic. Um, uh, it is logs uh, that are used rather than a, a more modern technology to keep the house afloat. Um, and the committee recommends passage. Thank you, Councilmember Morales. Are there any other comments on the legislation? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on the passage of the bill? Councilmember Nelson? Aye. Councilmember Peterson? Aye. Councilmember Strauss? Yes. Councilmember Herbold? Yes. Councilmember Morales? Yes. Councilmember Mosqueda? Aye. Council President Pro Tem Lewis? Yes. Seven in favor, none opposed. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The bill passes and the chair will sign it. Will the clerk please affix my signature to the legislation on my behalf? Okay, adoption of other resolutions. There are no resolutions for introduction and adoption on today's council agenda. Um, last item other business um i did want to take a bit of a digression under other business um to give council colleagues um space 
uh, to make public comments and and recognition of the uh, unprecedented news um, that has been shaping um, uh, well, it has the potential to dramatically reshape the country in a bad way uh, that broke uh, yesterday evening, um, well after council briefing. Um, I want to uh, start, um, oh, hold on just one moment. Madam Clerk, did we have on the agenda an appointment for Joel Merkel to the public safety. We did, uh, Council President Pro Tem Lewis. He was considered under the consent calendar. Oh yes, okay, right. That's what I thought. Thanks. Sorry, I was just someone just reached out asking if Sorry, that was that was me. Uh, <laughs> My yes, apologies. <laughs> this this does happen occasionally. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, I wanted to make sure we address that. Um, uh, uh, Joel Merkel, if you're watching, we didn't forget about you. You were in the consent agenda, um, and we are uh, honored to have you uh, here at the city to be um, uh, to be part of the work along with everyone else uh, who was on the consent agenda. Um, so thank you. Uh, see, that's some diligent uh, committee chairing there to make sure all of your stuff got through <laughs> on the on the final agenda. Um, so, so going back to it, though, I did want to take a moment um, for good of the order uh, to give an opportunity for public comment, given um, the recentness of the news of the uh, of the impending decision of the court to over uh, overrule um, the Roe and Casey uh, stare decisis opinions. Um, and I just want to take a moment at the top um, just to recognize the historic tragedy of, the, of that impending decision by the United States Supreme Court. Uh, it's having read uh, the draft decision that's been circulated. Uh, it's a decision eroding decades of social progress in this country, has horrifying implications for impacting the privacy, civil rights, and health care of millions of Americans. It's a decision entirely dismissive of the fundamental spirit of constitutional guarantees of privacy and personal autonomy that appear in several parts of our constitution and indeed has frightening implications beyond this decision for future court actions to further erode personal liberties and rights recognized by the Warren and Berger courts in particular. Uh, it is in short, an edict that would be expected from a theocratic state and not the judiciary of a free and independent republic. And I did want to just express today in open session um, my strong feelings in, in opposition to that decision, my commitment going forward um, to support um, state and federal leaders, as Councilmember Strauss indicated earlier, um, and indeed what we can do as local officials uh, to make sure that uh, um, rights and guarantees of privacy of reproductive autonomy, um, of the right to do, um, uh, uh, to make your own healthcare decisions without um, the government intervention is something that we strongly support. Uh, I salute the community members, including our own senior deputy mayor, Munisha Harrell, uh, who gathered uh, right as this council meeting was beginning in District 7 in Cary Park to express their strong opposition to this decision. And I understand some council offices are considering uh, potential resolutions uh, for the council to formally comment on this topic. And I look forward over the course of the next week uh, to talk to council colleagues and duly consider those resolutions. Um, so with that, I, I'm happy to open it up uh, and allow opportunity for um, uh, other good of the order comments from council members. Seeing no additional um, good of the order comments, uh, colleagues, this does conclude the items of business on today's agenda. Our next regularly scheduled city council meeting is on May 10th at 2 p.m. I hope you all have a wonderful afternoon and the council is adjourned.